Hi guys and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you what are the best practices to store a username and a password when you're dealing with something which is so sensitive. So the simplest way to do, I want to show you and to invoke a login operation. So I have this simple workflow that it will open cloudupi.com. It will choose the username and password authentication and it will type the username and the password and then it will click on the sign in button. So I want to create a UiPath robot that it will authenticate to the cloudupi.com. In this case, I'm just using Chrome. So I want to show you two techniques that you can use to store safely the username and password on your account. Now, the simplest way is to store this information to the cloudupi.com. Now, this one is required to have the robot connected, which by the way, I have here on the default. So if my robot is connected and I want to store the username and password, well, in this case, it's really not the best example because I'm trying to connect to the cloudupi.com, but it works for every website. So I am on my tenant and I have two options to store this one safely. I can store per tenant. Now this one will make visible to all the robots that can run here under the tenant, or I can make specifically for my user. It's really depending on the granularity of the security that you want to have. So let's choose this my workspace. Now my workspace under the assets, you can add here under the plus, a username and a password. So you can say an asset name. This one is mandatory. The type you need to say credential and to the credential store, you can still keep credential database and you need to type here the username and the password and you're going to click create. Now, the other option is to go to the shared folder. So in my case, the shared folder is this one default. So under the default, I have here under the assets and I can have a new credential and actually let's add it here. And I'm just going to store here something related to credential and say UiPath credential and hit copy. I can choose to create a global value for all the robots or for robots individually. Now, in this case, I'm just going to interested to create something global. So I want to go Daniel automation pill.com and my password I have here in my clipboard. So press create. So what I need to keep is only this credential name. So I'm just going to copy, minimize, and I will just open here at the bottom credentials. And because I want to get the credential from the orchestrator, I want to get this get credential to the credential name. This one is the asset name. So I'm just going to type this UiPath credential and I need two variables, the username and the password. So the password, I'm going to create a variable. Now, before to create a variable, I would say that this one is not the best approach. So if you're going to do this, uh, you're going to have a warning to the analyze project. Information sensitive like username and password, it's not recommended to put it somewhere on the top. So because I'm going to do that, these variables will be visible here in the web. Now I want to make this as small as possible. So what I can do actually to follow the best practice, what I need is only in these two activities. So I'm going to create a scope. So let's sequence. And I'm going to drag this get credential here under the sequence. And these two, I'm going to press control to select multiple activities and drag and drop here. Now I can safely use this get credential because this one is the last scope. So what will happen? when this sequence will be visible, these two variables will be created and at the end they will be destroyed. So if in a potential attacker, it will stop the execution of the robot. It's limited to a very small amount of time. So let's go here and continue get credential. So let's say I'm just going to use the variable password and the username and say username. And if I go here under the variables, I can see that the password is in a secure string and the username is a string. So what I can do, I can just replace this one, this type into, because this one, it requires a plain type. So I need to have the password in plain text. Now I have two options. I can either convert a secure string to a string, but if you want to do that, I'm going to leave a link here in the description, how you can achieve that. So what I'll do, I'm just going to replace this activity. So type secure text. And what I'll do, I can either 
uh, what I'm interested in is only to copy this selector. So let's consider this selector is reliable. To be honest, I didn't check, so maybe it will fail. I'm just gonna go here to your text selector and click paste. And here I'll collapse the target and the secure text, it's needed a secure string. So the secure string, I have the variable which is named password and I'm gonna type here. And I can delete now this type into, so delete. So let's make a link with the username. Now the username, it's in the variable which is named username and that should be all. Now let's give a try to this robot. So I'm gonna press run. Okay, it will open on the other screen. It will open Chrome where I'm not logged in. It will press here, it's setting the username and password and it's pressing sign in. So I think it works. Now I can do uh, to check. I didn't make any check if this authentication succeeded. I'm just interested to see, uh, to perform this step. Great, so this is the first method. Now let's show how we can do the other method. So I'm gonna press sign out. Okay, and I'm just gonna click. So the other method is to store this get credential in your local computer. So this one will be only visible to your local machine. So how can you do that? Well, you need to basically replace this get credential because this get credential, it will get to the credential to the connected orchestrator. And by default, if you're not connected to the orchestrator, this method will not work. And as you can see here, I'm green. Now, if I don't have an internet connection and or I don't have anything which is a store, this method doesn't work. So the other one is to store this information on your local computer. So how can you do that? Well, basically you just need to replace this get credential. So I'm just gonna delete. And for that, I need an additional package. So I'm gonna go here in dependencies. By default, these are the packages which are set when you create a new process. So I'm gonna go and click manage. And in the all packages, I'm gonna set here search and I'll say credential. Okay, so there is this package you have at credential activities, which I'm gonna install, click save. Okay, so at the description is store UiPad window credential store activities. And what we'll do, we will store in the Windows credentials manager is called this information encrypted. Well, to access this, I'm just gonna press Windows. This will open the star menu. Unfortunately, you cannot see because I have on the other screen. And I'm just gonna type Windows credentials. And this will open the credential manager, which I'm gonna drag here from the screen. And you can have here, it's in the control panel, credential manager. Now I'll go here under the Windows credential. And I have here some already credentials, as you can see, uh, these are my local computer. Basically, a lot of programs, they are using this as a shared place. This is a shared place to store safely username and passwords or any kind of credentials. So what I'm interested, I'm interested to, let's consider this generic credential. So I'm gonna add a generic credential. And to the name, it's very similar with what I did previously. Now I can use the same name or I can use something differently. So I can say UiPath account. To the username, I'm just gonna type my account. And to my password, I have it on my clipboard. So hit paste and click OK. So I have created here, as you can see, this is a UiPath account. Now what I'm interested, this one is a public name the username and the password. So I go here in the edit and I can edit the account, but I cannot change the name. So let's type again this name, UiPad account, go here and under my sequence in the same plus, I'm gonna say credential and you're gonna have multiple credentials. So what I'm interested, I'm interested to get secure credential. By the way, this one is stored locally. You can request the credential to prompt the user or to add and remove. So I'm interested to get secure credential. And to the credential type, you can leave here generic. And to the persistent type, you can keep enterprise. So the target is the name that you're interested. And in. this one, it's UiPath account. So I need to match this name with this name. 
and to the username and password I'm gonna just skip the same thing. By the way, password it's still a secure string. And you may wonder why do we need a secure string instead of a string? Well, I'm gonna talk in the later video and actually talk about this conversion, but mainly it's for security reason. It's the way how this value is stored in the computer memory. So it's more technical, but let's keep secure string. So to the password, I already have a variable which is of type secure string, which is named password. And to the username, I have here this username. So now this time I can easily disconnect to the orchestrator. Well, I'm not gonna do that, uh, but I can simulate. So close, you can see that uh, the new job has been executed. So it will open a new tab. Now this time, the robot doesn't expect to have this window. So I need to go here, forget account, and it will prompt my email and my password, which is secure here. Now maybe let's try to disconnect from the orchestrator to see if it still works. So I will go here and hit on the preference to orchestrator settings and click disconnect. And I can see that orchestrator is not connected anymore. Click close. And now let's log out from the orchestrator. Log out. And let's say forget account and hit close. Open a new window, run the robot again. Okay, if you're just gonna stay offline, we can see that this robot is starting. So the login robot, it's a job starting process and it will fill in the email and the password and the authentication succeeds. Now you may wonder how about if you are using reframework. I have here reframework template and I'm gonna open the config.xls file. Now as a general rule, and I'm gonna highlight, don't ever ever store username and password here in this config.xls file. This is a plain text and it's not encrypted. However, however, what you can do is to store here a key and I'm gonna show you what's the key. So going back here, let's say I'm gonna have here process auth and in this case, I'm just using the get credential activity from the orchestrator. And what I recommend and what I usually do, I'm gonna bound this asset name to a variable, which I have here as an argument. Now this, let's say I'm gonna call this process auth in the initial application, I'm gonna drag and drop here. And when I'm gonna import the arguments, I'm gonna say here to this configuration value, so in config, and I'm gonna set here a new key. And the value here, it's really depending on the credential which I'm using. So I'm gonna make an assumption that this credential, this process auth, it's for an application which is called my app. So I'm gonna have here my app, then this is a credential. I'm gonna have credential or I don't know, credential, key. Uh, however, I don't use the asset name because this is really an implementation detail related to orchestrator. Usually I use this mechanism with the key to indicate that this is a pointer to something, even if I'm using to read from the orchestrator or from the local storage. So I'm gonna just copy here. I'm gonna use this. Then I'm gonna convert to string hit OK, and now I can uh, type here whatever value was in orchestrator. For this example, I'm gonna say UiPath account. Even if I have used UiPath account for my Windows credential, I just want to highlight uh, the usage and not necessarily this example. And another advice which I use is to go here in the process auth and for the default value to use whatever value fits your need for the development purposes. For instance, if I'm gonna have the key in my development machine, I know, let's say foo or my app key. Uh, I usually write this for the development uh, purposes and in the configuration file, which I have here problem, I'm gonna leave it here with this key. So I'm gonna save and that's the way how I do password management. Now, I would really appreciate if you just drop me a comment and let me know what's your method to do password management to store credential information. Also, if you like this type of content and you find this video valuable, I would really appreciate a like button. That really gives me a lot of courage and motivation to continue to make these videos. I'm Daniel and until the next time, see you soon. Bye.